going to do that. So Reagan, um, I know she's got an amazing story, but what I love is she graduated from Baylor and then she moved to Austin and worked in, for, for the University of Texas for over a year when she realized what her dream job was and her dream life and her Mary Kay full-time career. It surprises other beauty consultants to hear that even though I had grown up in Mary Kay all my life, I had to overcome the same obstacles, fear, time management, and rejection, this is just name a few. But quitting was never an option, and our unit debuted only six months after I made my decision. She's won numerous cars. She's traveled the world thanks to Mary Kay. Um, her mom and dad have been in Mary Kay forever. Her mom's been in Mary Kay. She's won so many awards and earned so much income. I have no many, have I, any idea, Reagan, how you probably have earned at least a million by now. Um, who knows? But I just want to say, um, we're just excited that you're on here. So, guests, I just want you to say, open your heart, and we're going to have Reagan Danforth speak to you. So, Reagan, go ahead and take it away, girl. Well, hello, hello, beautiful people. All right, Janice, can you hear me okay? We're good? Awesome. Wonderful. Well, I am super excited to get to come on here. And Mary Kay, we have what we call the go give spirit. And that is that the fact that we have no territories no quotas, the fact that we have such freedom and flexibility, Mary Kay knew that in order for that brilliant idea that everybody told her would not work, in order for it to work meant that we as women would, we, would do what we do best. And that is to share with each other, to encourage each other, to support each other. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I find a brand new spot remover, laundry detergent, shampoo, I mean, I have to tell all of my friends. And Mary Kay knew that that would be a, first of all, a great reason why this business would be so successful because as women, we just naturally share what we're passionate about and what we love, but also that the go give spirit of us sharing and encouraging all of our ideas and our success stories and pouring into each other, not just those who we're going to make money on, right? Not just those who we're going to get something, we go give, not go get. And Janice is such a beautiful example of that. Not only doing that herself for others, but bringing people in and leveraging this beautiful spirit that we have in Mary Kay. And the flip side of that coin is that in our culture, it's considered a huge honor to be asked to share. That we trust each other enough because I will tell you that Janice is not going to just let anybody come on here and tell y'all so because who knows what people might you know you never know she's not going to put somebody on here that she doesn't trust so to me it is such a, an amazing honor and one of the greatest compliments in the world to be given to have the freedom to share with y'all because she has no idea what I'm going to say <laughs> so I am really really excited and you know what I'm just going to tell you my story and as Janice already mentioned, I grew up in Mary Kay. So my mom started her company in 1973 and I was born in 1978. So I'm 43. So you don't have to start worrying about doing the math. Um, and so I literally grew up in a Mary Kay home. I grew up in pink Cadillacs and I loved growing up pink. I loved um, really everything about the culture, the company, the products, and my mom's business, because my mom did it with such excellence and such balance of doing what Mary Kay taught her to do, putting God first, family second, and career third. She taught us how to be in the moment. I never felt like her Mary Kay business was more important to her than I was, but I also respected that it was a business, that it was a job, that it that she had commitments that she made to other people, um, and that it was a, it was a part of our lifestyle, just like anybody else who has a real job, right? You have to treat it like a real job, and then the people in your life realize, oh, this is you know this is a real deal. So for me, it didn't it just wasn't even. I didn't know any different. And my dad was in the military, so he was gone a lot. So she was really a single parent a lot of the time. And I will say that when my dad was home, he was home. He was present. He was an amazing dad when he was home. He just wasn't home a lot. <laughs> and so she had to figure it out. And that's what drew her to Mary Kay in the first place. As a military wife, it was very hard for her to find a job. And she certainly could never keep a job because we were moving constantly. So that's how it started for her. 
But what I loved about it from the perspective of a child watching my mom build this business was the fact that we were involved in a culture where women were creating a lifestyle. And I said years and years and years ago, my mom asked me to, to do some, an event kind of like this. And I said, you know, my dad did provide a really good living with his military career. He was extremely successful and he retired as a Lieutenant Colonel, turned down the position of Colonel to retire. And he was very successful in his career and he made a good living. But my mom's Mary Kay business is what provided the lifestyle. And I don't just mean financially. I mean, being in an environment of women who set goals, work towards goals, overcome disappointments, failures, obstacles, being in an environment where women actually do cheer each other onto success. It's not something that's just kind of said, like, I don't know about y'all, but I've been in jobs before or in environments before where they're like, oh, we're like a family. But the, the marketing plan and the culture and everything really is not in alignment with what they're saying. And so, but I didn't know, I mean, that was the only thing I had ever experienced was an environment where women truly cheered each other on for success. We had the go-give spirit. We, um, and yes, the financial freedom that her career provided because of her career, we had the extra dance lessons. We had horses. We actually, when we first moved to Texas, when my dad retired from the air force, one of our big surprises was that we got to take, start taking horseback riding lessons. And of course, every little girl's dream. And by the end of that, we both owned our own horses. Well, my parents owned our horses um, and we were, com we were very competitive in that arena literally and figuratively. And, um, and that was something that, you know, her Mary Kay income paid for. We lived in nicer neighborhoods and better homes than what military housing would have provided. We had safe cars when we turned 16 and college degrees that when we graduated completely debt-free travel. I love to travel. I know not everyone, you know, not, we don't all have the same dreams. Not everybody wants to ride a horse. I get that. Not everybody loves to dance and not everybody loves to travel, but what are the things that you have a passion for that you would want to do, or that someone you love would let, would love to do. And that your success is what is going to enable living a dream. And, um, and now seeing what they're able to do with and for their grandchildren, you know, my dad managed the money, thankfully, because they're as much as my mom earned, which ended up being, oh shoot, I should have written it down. I'm not good with numbers. I think it was 14 million. Um, by the time when she retired, um, it was, um, nine. And then once all of her retirement, it'll be over 14 million that she earned. Um, who knows if, we, if a dime would even be left of that, if my dad had not been really great at managing the money. So they were a good partnership, but now they're living this amazing lifestyle in retirement that gives me a huge dream for the future that in my twenties, I wasn't even, it wasn't even on my radar. I wasn't even thinking about it, but now looking 30 years ahead to where I will be. I want that lifestyle that they have to come and go as they please, to travel the world, to not worry about any medical expenses, to take their grandchildren every year on a trip of their grandchildren's dreams, to pay for weddings of our dreams that we had, you know, just all of those things, just that limitless opportunity of lifestyle, of that freedom and that joy to not be stressed about the future. And so I, I really loved everything about Mary Kay, but what's funny and surprising to a lot of people is that I really did not grow up thinking I was going to be a sales director or a national sales director. I knew that I wanted to do something that would make a difference in people's lives. I knew from a very early age, I felt God's calling on my life to be a positive influence, but I didn't know exactly what that would look like. So many of you on here probably can think back and you may clearly already be able to answer this. Some of you may have to think back to what is that vision from when I was little what was that first vision that I had, that first deep burning desire of who I wanted to be? And I'm not talking about what you wanted to do, but who you wanted to be. I, I had no idea what I was going to do with my life, but I had a lot of clarity and passion around who I wanted to 
B. And so that directed a lot of the choices that I made. And and so when I turned 18, I became a consultant, honestly, on a whim. I completely surprised my mom when we came home from seminar that summer. And I said, I really should have gone to some of those classes because I would always go because I loved the entertainment. And I went to every seminar, y'all, my entire life. I went to every seminar. Now, I wasn't in the arena because that's a professional place. And so I wasn't, uh, where children aren't allowed in the arena. And so I wasn't in the arena, but then once my mom, but I would go and I'd hang out at this, at the hotels because this was my family y'all. Like this was where we gathered. And again, my mom didn't have childcare. So we went to seminar and somebody's older child, like daughter would watch us. We always had someone that was there taking care of us. And so I just was there for the pool and the fun and going to the few things that we were allowed to go to. And then when she retired, when she became a national, I was 11. And at that point we were on the big seminar stage and my mom debuted as a national sales director. And it was a dream come true for our whole family. And from, and at that point we got to be in the arena. So I was there and I made sure I was at every performance because y'all it's like a Broadway musical, like all throughout, they have these unbelievable performances. We are, we get to sign up tomorrow. Registration opens for seminar. So I'm just telling you guys, if you have not decided it's, 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 there's no question. You've got to go. I went and I wasn't even in Mary Kay and I went every single year. And so that summer I said, mom, I should have gone to some of the classes. And she's like, why? I said, well, because if I'm going to be a beauty consultant, I probably should have learned something while I was there. <laughs> and that, and that was the beginning. And I will tell you still, all I wanted was to just be a part of it. I didn't have big financial goals or career goals at that time. I was about to go to Baylor to start my college, you know, career. And when I went to Baylor, my mom sent me, I would did like new consultant orientation, held my first parties, which were, I was, it was like a hot mess because you don't know what you're doing. Right. And the, 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 the joke that we had, or kind of the analogy that we shared is that all those years of horseback riding lessons, my mom would take us, she would sit there and she would watch us go around the arena, around the arena. She would hear everything that my trainer was shouting at me. She would, she was there every minute that I was there, but could she get on a horse and compete? No, because she hadn't been on the horse. So me seeing from the outside, I had the vision and I loved the products, but I did not know anything about being an entrepreneur or even holding a skincare party. And it was a hot mess. And yet I still managed to sell some product and add a team member. And I went off to college and my mom sent, had my inventory in this perfect trunk that fit perfectly in my little closet. And it just sat there and collected dust. It was like, I was the undercover secret agent of Mary Kay. I remember at one point, a girl down the hall from my dorm came into my room and said, Hey, I heard you sell Mary Kay. And I said, how? <laughs> I was like, I, I don't think I've told anybody. And so I ended up selling product like against my own will. Um, but it kind of gave me the bug because that put money in my pocket. And in college, all I needed was some money in my pocket with flexibility around my very busy college life. And so that's all it was for me at that season. And that might be all you're looking for too, is just something, a little extra something where you don't have a boss telling you what to do. You don't have to ask for vacation time. You just want to be able to do what you can do when you can do it to make that extra little bit of income. And that was the perfect fit for me. And that, and then when I graduated from college, I moved to Austin, Texas to actually build, begin a political career. That's what I thought at that point, that making a difference in who I was meant to be, I thought that's what it was going to look like, was actually um, running for office or maybe going into political journalism. I was still kind of figuring that out. So I moved to Austin, um, our capital, and uh, the it was in 2001. It was right you know, right after 9-11, it was right, at, right after the internet kind of, you know, crash thing. And um, there were no jobs to be had. And um, I was so fortunate. I showed up to Austin with a car full of everything I owned and walked into a um, temp agency. And I was 
our, our interview was scheduled for like 4.30. So by the time the interview closed, was done, it was after five, everybody had left the office and the phone rang and I got my first job. And so God provided. And I worked at that temp agency until I got the job working through the university of Texas. And that's where I worked for a year. And I really was not, I was new. I knew absolutely nobody. I didn't really think I was going to do anything with my Mary Kay business at that time uh, because I was going into my career and my mom would bring up Mary Kay. And I, at one point, I, I remember I was driving in my car and we were talking and I think I was probably talking about how broke I was and how I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And, but this definitely, this job definitely was not it. And she, um, and she said something about Mary Kay. And I said, mom, if you say Mary Kay to me one more time, I will stop speaking to you all together. Now you have to understand my mom is a very dominant person. So I wasn't being particularly horrible, but because she could handle it. But that is how much I was like, no, I'm not doing this. This is for you and not for me. And so that summer was going to be the first seminar ever that I was going to not go because I didn't have the vacation days right? And I didn't have the money. And my mom needed to understand that this was for her and not for me. And it was all of these reasons that I wasn't going to go. And that, and a week before seminar, she had Bell's palsy. So long story short, I decided to go to be there to support her. And I caught the vision. I caught the vision. I couldn't even think, I, I couldn't even be in the arena without just crying. And I was like, what is going on? And I realized that it's because it was that perfect combination. I had my list. So, you know, when we're dating and we're, we make our list of like our dream guy. Well, I had a very clear list of my dream life and I was still single at the time, but I knew that I wanted to have a career. Um, I, I always knew I wanted, I didn't want to ever, I, I always knew I wanted like a career of my own. And I knew that I wanted financial freedom and I knew that I wanted to travel and I knew that I wanted to have an amazing marriage and kids. And I knew that I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. I knew that it, how important it was to live with my priorities of God first, family second and career third. And I found places where I could have an amazing career. And I, I saw I saw people in, in, you know, that I just around as I was making friends and seeing people at work. And I just didn't see anybody that had what I wanted. And y'all, I wanted it all. I wanted it all. And I just was too young and dumb and stubborn to take anything less than that. So I was looking for anything other than Mary Kay where I could have it all. <laughs> And I just realized that that was the one place, the one place where I didn't have to sacrifice any of it. And so that began my real journey in Mary Kay. At that point, I became a sales director. I went home again, totally shocked my mom, quit and decided I was going to become a sales director. Um, by the following summer, I had quit my job. I was supporting myself as a single woman owning my own home and, de and um, debuted on stage. As a director, I had earned my first career car, and we did all of the first, uh, those of you who were in Mary Kay, we did all of the, the new director, that first year challenges, we did all of those, and we were moving, and we were shaking, and it was amazing, and at that, once I was in it, there was so much more, there was so much more than it all, there was the sisterhood, there was the opportunity to, um, to be poured into as much as I wanted to pour out to people. There were women who were willing to tell me anything and everything I needed in order to support me, to create that life, not just professionally, but as a young woman. Um, just, I, I can't even put into words the culture that you become surrounded by when you come into the Mary Kay world. It is unlike anything else out there. And I, um, I met Craig, my hunk of hunk of bird in love. So Craig and I met and we, at our first date, I showed up in a pink Cadillac. So you guys, from day one, it was love me, love Mary Kay, <laughs> love pink. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. And we got married and we started a family. So my boys are now, um, eight and 11. And what I want to leave with you is that 
the thing that I am most passionate about in life um, is our journey that each and each and every one of us has our own journey of discovering what it looks like to put God first, family second, and career third. And Mary Kay has been a place, a safe place for me to discover that for myself. It, my, I am, have a very different personality than my mother. Um, our, our jobs, our careers do not look identical. Not any one of us, any national sales director, any director, we come in all different shapes, sizes, ages, personalities, strengths. And so I just encourage everyone on here to really be clear about what your strengths are. And I love that Mary Kay, the career, gives us the opportunity to work in our strengths. Because as I've done strengths finders, you can look that up online if you don't know what I'm talking about. I've worked with people who discover their strengths and realize that they, that the job that they're in or different circumstances that they're in do not give them the freedom to fully be all that they were created to be. And so that creates frustration, anxiety, depression, stress, and feeling like you're treading mud. So if you feel like you're treading mud, it's because you're not living in your sweet spot. And this was a place that would give me that freedom to figure it out and to do it my way in a way that had the integrity and the culture and yet be supported by a multi-billion dollar international company that Janice showed you guys already. And so that for me is what all of the journey of having, going from single, married, babies, kids in elementary, you know, daycare, elementary school and beyond is that I got to each step of the way, figure out what that looked like for me and not have anyone else telling me what I had to do. I got to choose what I wanted to do to create the life that I love. And it's a journey and I get to, and I, every six weeks, I think my life changes. I don't know if y'all can relate. I'm pretty sure you can every six weeks, our life changes. And so we get to rediscover and, and redefine and get creative around that. So that's, that's the main stuff that I just wanted to share with you guys. Oh my gosh, Reagan, thank you for sharing. I was watching you. You have so many of your mom's mannerisms though. I see you guys. It's so funny. So it's so interesting. And guess if you're on here, you know, we all come from different places and different spaces in our life. And Reagan, thank you for just sharing your heart and everything.